joined with the president and CEO of Slang Worldwide, Mr. Chris Driesen. Happy New Year to you. How are you, sir? Doing great, Chad. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to yourself as well. You as well. Lots changed since we last spoke, which was around U.S. Thanksgiving. Not much has changed in the U.S. cannabis landscape, but I say that sarcastically. But uh, wow, it's uh, 2021's off to a great start, is it not? Absolutely, man. We're uh, not only with our company, but obviously you can see it across the sector. But uh, man, big, big things ahead and certainly getting some macro tailwinds as well. And feels nice for a change, you know, to, uh, it? to have the wind at your back. The only thing that hasn't changed is our Cowboys are not in the playoffs, but oh, well, well I think that's that's still a dumpster fire. Some things <laughs> never change. Exactly. So let's begin. New year, new opportunities, uh, new administration coming in with uh, the majority of the Senate being Democrat now. So it's favorable towards the cannabis industry. So let me ask you straight up, if I'm new or a current investor in this industry, what is going to get me excited about investing in a slang worldwide as we kick off, it looks to be an incredible year within this industry. Well, I'll start on the things that we can control and then I'll broaden out from there. Uh, you know, the, the, the biggest things that are changing with slang, and you're going to see this throughout the year when we do our earnings calls, is that we're now a plant touching company. So when you look at some of our unit economics going from licensing revenue now into wholesale revenue, it's a dramatic shift upwards on uh, on our top line revenue and certainly profit will follow along with that. So that's probably the biggest piece. Some of the other things that are really exciting happening within our doors is we're expanding markets pretty rapidly. Yeah. Uh, we'll be going into California this year, Michigan this year, Massachusetts this year. Uh, and then one of the things, you know, speaking of, of our friends up in Canada, we're having great success. We just turned on our inside sales uh, uh, force to the Canadian market. We now have products in BC, uh, Ontario and Saskatchewan. Um, and man, and that's and they're just taking off like wildfire. Wow. So lots of really good things happening within the walls of the company. Uh, so great time, obviously, for somebody maybe taking another look at us or a first look at us. Um, and then certainly things that are happening in the industry, as you mentioned, uh, yeah. the American elections and, and, and kind of those high tides are, are raising all boats. And there certainly is a uh, an optimism between myself and several of the other executives that I speak to uh, that we are finally going to have some real change from a legislative perspective, because there's a whole spate of different ways that, yeah. that cannabis companies can be helped out on. So I think if you're an investor looking in, particularly at our company, and I'm sure others as well, uh, you know, all, all the point, all the, all the indicators are pointing the right way. So it's, you know, there's never been a better time to be focused on the cannabis industry. For sure. Branding always is number one, and regardless of what industry you're in, cannabis has had some challenges, I think, from its inception. But you and the bright side have been looked at as one of the brand leaders uh, within the cannabis space. Uh, in the past, have been identified as perhaps could be the Coca-Cola of cannabis, which is obviously a pretty good compliment. Uh, right now, how many retail outlets are you in across the U.S.? And, and what's the goal to get to, uh, you would say, uh, over the course of the next 12 months? Well, I'll break it down for you. So Slang really sells products into really three different channels of retail. Yep. Uh, our core business obviously is selling finished cannabis goods, so THC yep. products into dispensaries. And we do that in 13 states. We do that in Canada. We do that in Puerto Rico. Most of those places we're doing that via strategic partnership, i.e. with the True Leaf. We'll go partner with True Leaf in Florida and soon to be Massachusetts. We'll work with them to leverage their infrastructure uh, to bring our products to market. In Colorado and Oregon, which are core markets for us, we're doing those things ourselves. Uh, so in Colorado, for example, we grow it, we process it, we distribute it, soup to nuts, everything up to wholesale. And then the, the other, the, so that's that's dispensary sales, the channel, the dispensary channel. Yep. The second is the CBD channel. You know, right. our, our recent acquisition of Lunchbox Alchemy, uh, they do a fabulous job, not only in the THC side of things in Oregon, uh, but also on the CBD side of things. So they've Which actually- Which is really got, heating up the CBD industry. I, I, it, oh, know. Un, unreal. And the margins are great. So they, they've got products in six, I keep saying they, I got to get used to saying us now that, now that we've acquired it. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. 600, 600 stores. 40 states where uh, yeah. where we have CBD gummies uh, through the Lunchbox brand. And then last but not least are our hardware sales. So Firefly 2 Plus, Open Vape 2.0 battery. And those things can be found in, in you know well over, I think it's around 3,200 stores yeah. um, around the world even. And we do that through partnerships with folks like Greenlight. Uh, so when you put all that together, we're in, it's tough to pin it down exactly on a day-by-day -day basis, but we're somewhere in, 
call it about 4,500 to 5,000 retail doors across, uh, really across the world. Yeah, that's great. How much of a concentration, because it seems it's pretty common sense to the e- e- e-commerce side of things, uh, how much of an expansion do you see that building out this year, knowing people's lifestyles have changed dramatically, especially in the last eight, nine months from COVID? Well, there's no doubt that consumer buying habits have changed. I think we could all look at our front porch and, uh, you know, see what Jeff yeah. Bezos is delivering us on a pretty regular basis. And and that's not going away, obviously, anytime soon. And certainly cannabis is pivoting into more of those models, whether it's outright delivery that you see in some of the West Coast states, whether it's a curbside pickup model that you see now really around the country. You've got companies, you know, like Dutchie, for example, that are facilitating um, uh, those transactions. So I can look online for the product that I want. I can be educated about other products and I know they're going to have it for me at my local dispensary when I show up. So certainly that's not going away. Um, e-commerce obviously is driving a big piece of that. We've long had an e-commerce platform and channel. Uh, you know, you love it. It's direct to consumer. Your margins are much higher. Um, we're going to be putting our CBD products soon uh, into an e-commerce channel as well, because there's just been such an outpouring of support and frankly, just to band, um, we want to find a way to get that to the to you know our our fans and consumers as quickly as possible, and certainly enjoy the extra margin that comes along with that. Yeah, you touched on Dutchie. What an incredible story that company's been in the last you know uh, just kicked off like less than twelve months ago. But tremendous growth, obviously, them as they continue to form relationships like with a company like yourself. So exciting yeah. times and so many really things. impressive. Yeah, it is. I want to talk about California. Uh, until recently, Plus Products gummies have been taking hold in the California market. So from a marketing perspective, are you where you want to be or can more be done within that state? Oh, a lot more. You know, we're about to re-enter with our partnership there with Natura Life and Science. Remember, District Edibles, once upon a time, was the number one selling gummy in, gummy in the state of California, period. So certainly that is our goal. So when we come back into that market with our partnership with Natura, um, you know, we set big goals. You know, we have BHAGs. You talked about it before. I think uh, your earlier question was how many stores do you want to be in? Yep. You know, the the uh, the entrepreneur in me says all of them, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, but we want to set realistic goals, obviously. But um, we do have a goal that, you know, by in the next five years, we want to be getting the North American continent high once a week. And so the way we factor that calculation, it's population divided by two to take out the people that aren't old enough. And then you multiply that number by five milligrams. And that's what we want to be distributing and how many branded moments we want our consumers to be experiencing. So, um, you know, the the short answer is it's a lot, Uh, but that's our BHAG. So when you look at the number of states, we then break that down into a three-year BHAG and BHAG again is a big, hairy, audacious goal. Then that comes down into a one-year goal. And one year goals obviously are right in front of us. If you don't know what you're doing in 2021 yet, you're well behind the eight yeah, ball. Of course. So we break that down into our annual goals, annual goals, but then break down into quarterly rocks. They all have action steps associated with them. And our entire organization runs on that format. So we are very much a team of teams that are working together to make our goals come true. Uh, and, you know, it's early on, obviously, we're barely halfway through January, almost halfway through January. But um, we are coming for ours this year. Make no mistake. Well, but in I California, was... to, to bring back your other question, yeah. uh, when we re-enter that market and we're getting pretty close, being able to launch products back into California, um, we are going to come out firing on all cylinders. Which products do you think will get you there the fastest? District's going to be the first out of the gate uh, yeah. for a few different reasons. You know, you have less competition in the gummy space than you have in, say, vape, concentrates, flour, pills, et cetera. Um, so, and it, it's free, it's previous prominence that it had in that market again was, you know, BDS number one gummy in the state for quite some time. So we are looking to regain that spot and recapture that market share. And then we'll do more product extensions uh, and bring in just simply new categories as well, whether that's of course, open firefly baked, et cetera. Uh, we'll be bringing pretty much our entire portfolio of brands and time back into the California market, but that's going to be led by district edibles. Well, I think it's important. Obviously, current investors understand your story. New people that are watching us right now, like you've got some great partnerships. We've talked about this in the past with True Leaf, your existing relationship with Canopy, otherwise known as at one time, probably perhaps the most well-known cannabis company in the world. Gage Cannabis, big player in Michigan. Uh, You've kind of alluded, uh, and I know you're not going to tell me, and I know you can't, but there's a lot of interested people in your product to expand even further. So 
let's face it. This it's industry- the people you would think that they are. I mean, there's no <laughs> yeah. secret there. Yeah, I can't have the selective disclosure, but I mean, there's no yeah. secret who are the companies that are making moves yeah. in cannabis. And certainly you're seeing a separation of the, the haves and have nots. Um, and so we consider ourselves fortunate to, you know, to have that outreach and, yeah. um, you know, are flattered to, to hold those conversations. Yeah, for sure. Well, we look at the landscape and a lot of companies, their share prices were suppressed over the last 12 to 18 months. Why? Because the industry ran into cash flow problems. But as I said earlier, new administration, uh, there could be some things that change going into 2021. I look at this stock. I look at the business model. I look at the brand recognition and the partnerships that are involved. And there's a lot of people, including us at the Dales Report, definitely feel that there's tremendous growth within this company. Um, of course, you're going to agree with me when I obviously say that, but um, I guess what are some of the big, uh, I guess, catalysts and I guess probably some of the, you know, hurdles that you're going to have to get over uh, that are staring you in the eyes you head into this year? If so, what are some of those? Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, you're, you're, you're dead right that there's tremendous upside with Slime. You know, uh, I think for a long time when you mentioned the industry kind of hit its capital crunch and, and really faced a lot of headwinds, you know, the, the better part of 2019, yeah. I think a lot of investors drew back and said, okay, let's see how these chips fall. Who's going to make it? Who's not? Um, you know, there maybe things weren't quite as they seemed with a lot of these these companies. Um, and then over the course of the next couple of quarters, you know, the first part of 2020, of course, you had the pandemic, uh, which further kind of separated a lot of companies. Um, but we were built to take a punch. It doesn't mean I want to take a punch. It just means we can. It so, is, you know, is, the right. way, right, the way we conserve capital, the way our capital light model allows us to operate our business and move into new markets. And we've demonstrated that time and time again. Now you're starting to see the results of what we've long espoused to be, you know, what our virtues are. You know, we are the leading CPG company in cannabis. We do partner with the best of the best of the best when we go into strategic markets. We are consolidating our supply chain assets in our core markets. And now you're starting to see, you know, it really started with our Q3 earnings report um, that the, the, the walk's starting to match the talk. And people know that. Look, people that are savvy know that we're now transitioning into plant touching revenue, which, of course, again, is just a much larger number than it has been historically when you're not plant touching. So people in the know understand that. And then you have a lot of folks on the outside that that are saying, hey, I see the BDS stack rankings or I've seen your product in Vegas and Bend, Oregon and, you know, in Miami, et cetera, uh, all these different places. Oh, I went skiing in Aspen. You were there too. So you start to develop that brand recognition and people, you know, when, when they have an awareness from multiple different places, um, that all starts to kind of come together for them. So we've got really great things ahead of us. You know, some of the biggest catalysts we're looking forward to, again, being plant touching uh, and receiving full quarters worth of credit for being plant touching. Q1, we, we got some of that in Q4. Yeah as many of the acquisitions close throughout that quarter. Q1 will be the first quarter where we get a full, you know, full boat from soup to nuts on our uh, uh, plant touching revenue. Uh, we are expanding into the three markets. Like I told you, Canada's popping off for you. Like yep. I told you, um, uh, district Emerald, edibles. How about the Emerald Triangle in Oregon as well? You know, you grow yeah. oranges in Florida, but the cost- You grow weed in, in Southern Oregon. Exactly. It's, it's, it's look, you know, the Emerald triangle, it's like uh, the cost per pound is more than half the cost is what some of these operators are currently doing in the East coast. And the big thing, obviously about cannabis users is they want high quality product. So, you know, as you start to expand even into that region as well, um, it, it appears to me, obviously it, it's a good strategy and uh, what's, how are things developing, I guess, on that front? Well, actually being been next week, you know, we, we closed our, our acquisition with Lunchbox this, this past October. So just a few months ago, um, the CBD facility is also out there, not to mention Bend is just one of the, the great towns in America. So, yeah. you know, a little, little quick plug for Bend, Oregon, go if you haven't been, um, but you're dead right. You know, we, we firmly believe that in time, you're going to see that, you know, eventually interstate commerce happens. Um, you know, are you going to grow cannabis, you know, a mile off the Las Vegas Strip or in northern Maine or, you know, in, in, in Edmonton, Alberta? Not exactly no. the crucibles of agriculture. 
Uh, now, that could be many, many, many moons from today, but we want to be well positioned, at least from a relationship standpoint, for when that day comes. So Catalyst 2, I mean, think about Florida. District Edibles is about to go live. Uh, open Cured Resin is about to go live. When True Leaf does anything, they don't do it small. So as we are able to put more and more products into their ecosystem, it's just a multiplier on our relationship with what we're doing there. So when you look at new products, new acquisitions, uh, new opportunities and, and just putting on what we're already doing into more places that in and of itself bodes really well for slang over the course of this year. But then when you also look at things like, okay, what's possible, you know, with, with, with legislative change, uh, all of those really could be a lot of gas on the fire, but you know, you also ask, Hey, what are some of the headwinds? There's always, you know, there's always something as a, as, yeah. a, as a business leader that you need to overcome. Um, you know, and we're no different. Things are going very well right now. So we're in the process of how do we, you know, how do we play that hand wisely? We're more conservative than most. So one of the challenges I would look at, it really comes down to two things. People are very well aware of our story now, yep. but it's a very unique story. So that's great in a lot of ways because we do things that a lot Can of I cut you off just there. When you yeah. say unique story, what do you mean by that? You tell me another CPG dominated cannabis company that's our yeah. size, scope, and speed to market of what we do. There isn't one. I'll save yeah. you the. I'll save you the brain power. The, yeah. uh, it, they, they don't exist, which is great because it allows for a lot of people to say, "Hey, I want to be part of that." Like you mentioned, you know, working with some of these great operators we work with. That's why they, we work with them. But it also can present some challenges when you're talking capital markets because there's really not a good comparable. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you guys are doing what Blank's doing. And they either focus on one product or they're focused in one location. Not that there's not other good brands out there. Certainly there are, but there's not, in my opinion, and obviously it's biased, that there is not another company out there that has the number of brands we have that are performing in the number of places where those brands exist uh, and having the success that they're having. And when you mix that all together, we believe in time um, that is going to drive incredible value. In the interim, it's tough because they're, oh, you guys are an MSO. Sort of. We're in, a, we're in 13 states and two other countries, but we're not we're not vertically integrated the way they are. We don't derive retail revenue. So when you see that, and like, wait a second, you're you're purveying a quarter billion branded servings into the world. Well, why is their revenue so much higher? Well, for a lot of reasons, they're retail. So immediately I only get half. Um, I am only doing this ourselves in two states. The other 13 markets, we do it via partnership. So it is unique, but our ability to demand branded unit serving or branded unit sales, branded servings, market penetration, market share, typical C total points of distribution, our typical CPG metrics that we measure ourselves by, um, we are a clear leader in that field. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say, as the opportunities open up the doors for some of these retailers, obviously it opens up the doors for you. And what sells, I think, most uh, more than anything is the partnerships currently that you have with some of the biggest players currently in the U.S. cannabis landscape. Uh, listen, I appreciate you. Hey, talking. and in Canada, right? We've got a JV with Canopy up there in Agrifarm. I, you know, I'm super hot on Canada right now because we've just had, like I said, we just turned on inside sales there. And uh, man, we are going gangbusters up there. So man, if you're a Canadian and watching, uh, you know, go find those products. They're first class. Excellent. Chris, happy new year. Appreciate you uh, obviously catching up with us today. Let's keep in touch and all the best going into 2021. Always, Shaq. Great, great, great to always talk to you and appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, you as well, Chris. Thanks.